They've got these beautiful gold panels in the wings and the tail. If you get the right light, it's literally like the gold rush. You know, there's gold flashes in, in the bush. Um, it's really beautiful. This brilliant bird once roamed in flocks of hundreds, but the widespread loss of their habitat means there's now fewer than 350 in the wild. Regent honey eaters have their favourite trees to feed on nectar. So they'll move around the landscape seeking out areas where this blossom is, is happening and they need those really high quality patches and it's those high quality patches that we've lost. A rare piece of woodland forest in the New South Wales Hunter Valley is one of the region's last known strongholds. It's where a recovery team is working hard to save the species. At every turn, you're either looking at a threatened plant, a threatened community or hearing threatened birds it's a truly remarkable place and it really, really deserves to be protected. 90% of this sort of woodland's been cleared and what makes this place so precious is this is a huge slab of it, not chopped up into little bits. And the other really important thing is we're only 30 kilometres from the coast, so that makes this less drought prone than anywhere else that Regent honey eaters are known to breed. The species' lifeblood is their love song. But there's a problem. Because there's so few birds, these young male birds are actually mingling with other birds. And we're finding that those male birds are now taking up the calls of other birds. So what happens if the blokes lose their song and they can't communicate with the girls? I don't think a female regent honey would be too impressed by, by a male you know, doing a noisy fry bird call. <coughs> she might just think, well, you're not suited as a partner for me and she wouldn't be interested in pairing with that bird. The wild population got a boost last year with the release of a flock of birds raised in captivity. We've had fantastic survival. Birds have tried to breed like crazy, pretty much straight out of the tents. So yeah, it's been really positive. The release was on Wanarua country, which has finally reverted to its original owners. We haven't had access to the land that we're standing on for just over 220 years. So the land only came back to the Land Council in the last few years. Tara and her community see a parallel between the bird song and the return of the Wanarua language after 150 years. The region honey are losing their song and the Wanarua people were losing their song. And with the regents coming back to country and with the awakening of Wanarua language, there is this circle that is starting to be completed again for this country. But there's a dark cloud hanging over this last ditch attempt to save a precious bird from extinction. I can't fully relax in this bush knowing that where we're standing is actually zoned for industrial development. Knowing how important this place is and how special this place is, not just to Regent Honey, it is to all sorts of other biodiversity and Aboriginal culture as well that's not protected. For now, the plan is to use satellite technology to keep track of the birds, which have tiny transmitters attached to their backs. What we really want to get a handle on with this satellite tracking is where do they go once they leave this forest? So it's just another piece in the puzzle of what do we need to do to save this species? And I think it's on all of us to really try and save what is uniquely Australian. So they're really incredible birds and part of the big issue is that we have cleared so much woodland forest along eastern Australia, yeah. there's nowhere for these guys to live. The remarkable thing about the Tamalpan woodlands is these birds we now know, because of those satellite trackers you just saw, at least 30 of them have stayed there for seven months. That has not happened anywhere else in Australia. Wow. So it, it makes not turning that into industrial development <laughs> Crucial. Critical yep. for the survival of Regent Honey. So that requires planning changes. Mm. It sure does. And, 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 and it requires, you know, the ability to, to get Australians on board to save something that just seems like a bird, mm. but actually is very important because you take one thing out of the food chain and there's such a huge knock-on effect. Oh, it's such a great story, Barthi, and I think so heartbreaking that a bird has lost its song. That's, mm. you know, which is threatening the very survival of the species.